In today's electronics world, HD usually stands for high definition. When this Tandy 1200 HD was released in 1985, there was no such thing, but the HD is what really defines this system. Hey Tanner Lab fans, it's Jacob, and today we're going to be taking a first look at this Tandy 1200 HD. Be sure to stay tuned till the end of this video where we'll see if we can power it on. The Tandy 1200 HD was a system that offered features nearly identical to those found on an IBM XT, but at a much lower price point. The HD stands for hard disk, which was not a new concept in the computer industry during the early to mid 1980s, but it was revolutionary to have one inside of something as small as a personal computer. The first hard disk drive small enough to fit into a desktop enclosure was made by Shugart Technology, now known as Seagate. The ST506, as it was known, could store up to 5 megabytes and sold for $1,500, or nearly $4,700 in today's money. Five years later, the Tandy 1200 HD came with a Fujitsu MFM hard drive roughly the same size, but storing 10 megabytes of data. While the Fujitsu drive was small in 1985, it's a monster by current standards. It's known as a full height drive and takes up the amount of space you'd expect two full-size five and a quarter inch floppy drives to occupy. The truth is harsher still because of the weight. But remember, back then it was like having a storage drive the size of a large copy machine inside a desktop computer case. MFM, by the way, stands for Modified Frequency Modulation. It was a coding and transmitting standard that started in 1970 and remained a standard for hard drives until 2011. That's all just part of the story. There were countless players in the computer industry during the 1980s, but in the United States, IBM controlled how high to set the bar. Tandy had achieved great success with the 1000 and 1000A in 1984, and reviewers often praised the 1000 more than the IBM PC Junior it was based on. The Tandy 1200 HD was based on the IBM PC XT, but competing with it was no small task. In 1985, even small business systems needed much more storage than home computers. Graphics had not been developed to the point of being able to display photos well on screen, and processing technology couldn't yet keep up with music beyond the one-channel PC speaker music you'd hear in some video games. I won't even bring up video. The result is that business systems like the IBM XT incorporated internal hard disk drives, while home systems like the IBM PC Junior and the Tandy 1000 usually only had floppy drives. It was still common for business computer manufacturers to take a modular approach to system building, meaning a customer could purchase desktop systems and a third party might come in to install storage devices physically located outside the desktop enclosure. The result of this lethargic response by the big players was a massive untapped market for computer builders. Much of the success of Tandy's marketing strategy can be attributed to a willingness to operate in the more demanding small business environment. Tandy needed to allocate serious resources to high volume tech support infrastructure, but doing so was easier for Tandy than it would have been for IBM because of Tandy's experience with the home systems that had done so well in recent years. Systems like the Tandy 1200 HD were just what the doctor ordered at the time. Small businesses that couldn't justify the expense of a massive disk storage system were now able to purchase storage fully contained within a desktop system for a fraction of the cost. Tandy helped the process along by offering small scale business system options at a very affordable price. The IBM XT sold for almost $4,400 in 1985, or over $11,000 in today's money. The Tandy 1200 HD was advertised for only $2,995. However, its first version did not have as many expansion slots as the XT. In 1986, the 1200 HD offered the full seven expansion slots, and the price was dropped to $1,999, or $4,700 in today's money. Our system is one of the later 1986 versions. It has the full seven expansion slots, as well as a 1200 baud modem dated 1986. 
Color graphics was a $299 option in 1986, but our system still has the Tandy Deluxe Text CGA card. The Tandy 1200 HD was not manufactured by Tandy. It was manufactured by Tandon, which was a company started in 1975 that made a name for itself making magnetic storage media, disk drive, read-write heads, and eventually computers. You can tell by the look and feel of this machine that it's nothing like a Tandy 1000. It's heavy. Granted, the hard drive alone is probably five pounds by itself, but the frame and housing are old school, heavy duty steel. It's the product of a time when everyone was learning from or ripping off IBM. This means that smaller computers, particularly business systems, were built more like the mini computers of the 70s than the compact VCR size systems that they would soon become. So what's inside the case? The Tandy 1200 HD has been called the Hard Drive Tandy 1000. Based on internals, that's very much what it's like, but this big Winchester style hard drive would never fit into a 1000 enclosure. The power supply wouldn't either. It had an Intel 8088 CPU running at 4.77 megahertz, a slot for an 8087 numeric coprocessor, 256 kilobytes of RAM, expandable to 640K, an 80 column text mode, 640 by 200 pixel graphics, a 360 kilobyte double-sided, double density, five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive, a 10 megabyte MFM full height hard drive, five expansion slots, an 84 key keyboard, and came bundled with MS-DOS 2.11 and BASIC 2.0. There is a controller card for the hard drive and floppy disk controller. Our system also has the 1200 baud modem. Looking at the front hard drive cover plate, you can see how different the build quality is from a Tandy 1000. There's a plastic gasket between the outer steel covering and the cover plate, which has held up pretty well. I'm not sure if this is an RF shielding or vibration dampening. Uh, it could also be a protective heat shield for the cover plate. Information on this system is extremely hard to come by. Looking at the outside of the case, you can see what a tank it is. There's a Tandy badge on the front along with the full size five and a quarter inch floppy drive and the hard drive cover plate. On the back, you can see the power switch, AC power connector, American or European voltage selector, ventilation for the power supply, keyboard port, printer port, RJ11 jacks for the modem, and the CGA connector. We purchased our Tandy 1200 HD on eBay for $102.88. As usual, it could use a serious cleaning, but the overall condition is really good. Now that we've taken a look at the 1200 HD, let's see if it'll power on. All right, so we're gonna see if this computer works uh, with a hard drive this old, you, you never know. Um, there's also a chance that it was never parked by its previous owner, which is not good, um, but we're gonna try it. Now we do have a bit of a catch 22 here, a bit of a problem because this computer was designed to be used with the VM3 uh, high res monochrome monitor and we don't have one of those. We have a VM2 monochrome monitor, but that uses composite, which this computer doesn't have. Um, so it has like a standard MDA or CGA cable. We're gonna try it with this CM11 monitor and see if it works. It might not, but it's worth a shot. Um, and you'll find out as I do if it works. Uh, let's try it. I'm also really curious to hear how this hard drive sounds. We have power. And it's whirling up. It doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't sound perfect as I'd hope it to, but it does sound like it would work. Uh, looks like we're having some sort of a sync issue. Let me see if I can fix it. Might just be down to this monitor completely being incompatible, but eh, experiments are fun. 
Let's see. No, that that doesn't look right. Um, a couple more seconds. Let's see. Nope, I do not think it'll work with this monitor. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, maybe there's some work done we can do to get it to work with one of our other monitors. If you guys know anything about that, you should let us know in the comments. Um, but uh, without a proper monitor for this, I really don't have any way to test it. But hard drive sounds fine. And uh, it it is powering on. So uh, I'll call that a success question mark but man I wish we had the right monitor but we don't well that's that's it for this episode please check out some of our other first look videos uh, there's a playlist on screen you can binge them they're really great and uh, that's all I have so see you next time mm -hmm.